When we talk about waves in everyday language, we tend to think of water waves. But in physics, waves are far more important than that. It is waves that transfer all of the heat and light to our planet from the sun. And indeed, light from any other source. The electricity powering the light is also conducted to it in waves. Any speech or sound from radio or any other source is in the form of waves. When we switch our television on, the remote control sends a signal to the television in the form of waves. And of course the television produces the sound and the picture in waves. The signals to the television and the radio are broadcast as radio waves or microwaves. Every method of communication we have comes to us in the form of waves. Almost all energy transfer from the mundane to the special is in the form of waves. To develop science and our society, it's essential that we understand waves, how to manipulate them and how to measure them. And we start here. I'm using a slinky to show you these waves, not because it's an important example, but because it's easy to see. This wave produced by shaking the slinky from side to side is a transverse wave. You can see that the wave is travelling from left to right across the screen, but the individual coils themselves are moving up and down vertically on the screen. The coils are moving across the direction in which the wave is travelling, hence the prefix to the word trans, which means across, as in transatlantic. If we shake the spring up and down vertically, this is still a transverse wave. The coils are still moving across the direction in which the wave is travelling. Practical examples of transverse waves include water waves, which are easy to see as well, and all the electromagnetic waves, that is, radio waves through light down to gamma radiation. If instead of moving the spring from side to side, we push it backwards and forwards regularly, this results in a longitudinal wave, where the coils of the spring are pushing and pulling one another. So the coils themselves are moving backwards and forwards in the same direction in which the wave is travelling. There are fewer practical examples of longitudinal waves, but they include sound and AC electricity, where the electrons pulse backwards and forwards through the wires. There are four measurements we are likely to want to make on waves. That is, the speed, the frequency, the wavelength and the amplitude. In showing these, we are going to concentrate on transverse waves. I don't think speed needs any explanation, but remember that it is measured in metres per second. The wavelength of a wave is most often seen measured from crest and crest but it can be measured at any point on a wave, from one point on the wave to the same point on the next wave. When you mark it on a diagram for an examination, make sure you do so precisely, showing the end points of the arrows. And although we are concentrating on transverse waves, the same idea applies to longitudinal waves. The frequency of a wave is the number of waves passing a particular point every second. To illustrate this, we are going to measure the frequency of these waves. Now, to measure how many waves are passing in one second would be very difficult, so we measure the time taken to say pass 10 waves and then perform a simple calculation. Using this clock, we are going to measure how long it takes 10 waves to pass this arrow, measuring from crest to crest, starting now, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And by freezing the frame after 10 waves, we can see that it took 7.8 seconds for those 10 waves to pass. Remembering that the frequency is the number of waves passing our fixed point every second, we can calculate frequency by dividing the number of waves by the time taken. So, to quickly do this calculation, remember that there were 10 waves passing in 7.78 .78 seconds. Well, we certainly didn't measure that accurately, so we'll call that 7.8 seconds. 
frequency is the number of waves passing our given point per second. So there were 10 waves passing, and that was in 7.8 seconds. So the frequency is 10 divided by 7.8. So rapidly doing that, that comes out at 1.28 hertz. Well, 1.3 hertz, given that we didn't measure so accurately. Hertz is H-E-R-Z, and the abbreviation is simply H-Z. There's a simple but very important connection between the measurements we have just made on frequency and wavelength and the speed of the wave. The speed of the wave is equal to the frequency multiplied by the wavelength. Often written in symbol form, the speed of the wave is V times F, and the symbol for wavelength is the Greek letter lambda. Velocity measured in meters per second, frequency in hertz, and wavelength in meters. The units of frequency are sometimes written as s to the minus 1, since it is a number of waves per second. To find the speed of the waves that we were looking at before, we can use the frequency that we have already found, and then add on to that the measurement of the wavelength. So putting a ruler across the sides of the spring. We can measure the wavelength from trough to trough. Looking at it closely, that is 0.655 meters. Although I can't pretend the accuracy is that great, so we'll settle on 0.66 meters. Using the equation velocity equals frequency times wavelength, we already have the value of frequency of 1.3 hertz and have just found the wavelength at 0.66 meters. Velocity then, 1.3 multiplied by 0.66, turns out at 0.858 or 0.86 to two significant figures, and that's in meters per second. The amplitude of a wave is a measure of how much energy it is carrying. For example, for light it would be how bright it is, or for sound it would be how loud it is. You can see here the amplitude measured on the slinky. The measurement is taken from the crest, from the maximum position, to the center point, to the rest point, or from the minimum position, to the rest point. The amplitude is measured in meters. Thank you for watching.